Let's face it, learning the violin is no easy task, which is why I do my best to try to find ways to make your life a little bit easier, at least when it comes to learning the violin. And today I'll be sharing with you my five hacks that I've learned over the years for making things just a little bit easier when it comes to learning and playing the violin. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Lauren, a professional violinist and fiddle player living in Nashville, Tennessee, and I help thousands of people achieve their violin and fiddle goals. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Now let's get into these hacks. Violin hack number one that can make your life so much easier if you're a beginner is using bow hold helpers. Now what these are are just little rubber grippers that attach to your frog area of the bow and these help to reinforce a good bow hold if that's something you struggle with. So if you have issues with your pinky not staying curved, they can help with that. If you have issues with your index finger not staying in the same place, they can help with that as well. They can even help with keeping your thumb bent if you tend to have a banana thumb. So bow hold helpers are a great way to go and a great hack for making life just a little bit easier when you're learning to play the violin. And violin hack number two, if you didn't already know this, there are alternatives to using the standard traditional shoulder rest. Now I use a shoulder rest and it has worked great for many years, but when I was first starting out, I used actually a sponge that attached to my violin with rubber bands. Now this is great for young kids who have smaller instruments, but even if you're an adult and are not really ready to commit to a shoulder rest just yet, maybe you wanna try out different heights and different types of padding for the shoulder, sponges can be a great way to go. So like I mentioned, there are the sponges that you can attach with rubber bands. And I'm talking about actual sponges that are made for the violin specifically, but you can also use just a regular kitchen sponge, as long as it doesn't have a scratchy side that is in contact with the violin, as long as it's soft and padded, you should be in great shape. You can also use things like just a simple rag, folding a rag and placing it on your shoulder. That's another great way to give yourself a little bit of padding, a little bit of cushion. And I've even seen people use cosmetic sponges that attach to the violin. So with any of these shoulder rest alternatives, of course, you always wanna be careful with your actual instrument. So again, just make sure you're being responsible with the way that you are attaching these alternatives. Make sure that you are not doing anything that would potentially damage the instrument itself. Violin hack number three is one that I'm sure you all have heard of, and that is using violin finger tapes. Now, as I've said before in previous videos, I always recommend going for individual tapes. I, in the past, have used electrical tape, and I recommend that to my students. It's one of those things that you can buy for fairly cheap, it's fairly accessible in most areas, and all you have to do is just cut it up into thin little strips and place it on your fingerboard. I always recommend going that route versus going with something like a fingerboard sticker, just because every single violin is unique and different and has its own size in terms of the length of the neck and the fingerboard and so on. So those one size fits all aren't always one size fits all. So I would definitely recommend going with finger tapes. If you find that you are struggling to play in tune or just need a little bit of help with placing fingers in the correct places, there's no shame in using finger tapes. It's a great way to go. And my fourth hack might be a little bit obvious, but that is tuning with the fine tuners. It's great that we have this built-in option with the violin. We have two ways of tuning. We have the pegs and we also have the fine tuners. And if you're a beginner, I would definitely recommend starting out with the fine tuners before hopping over to the pegs, just because it makes things easier when you're practicing on a day-to-day -day basis to use the fine tuners instead of adjusting the pegs and worrying if you're gonna break a string or if something's gonna come loose. It just makes life so much easier if you have this option. So if you do have fine tuners, which many violins do, I would recommend sticking with those and using those for tuning. And my fifth and final hack for making your life a little bit easier, especially if you're a beginner on the violin, is using a practice mute. Now, there is such a thing as just a regular mute, an orchestral mute, but what I'm talking about here is an actual heavy duty mute that sits on top of your bridge. This one happens to be metal, but they also have rubber ones as well. And once you place it on your bridge, what it does is it dampens the vibrations of the strings, causing the strings to sound much 
quieter. And just to give you a quick example, I'll go ahead and play my strings without the mute and then with it so that you can hear the difference between the two. And now with the mute. So as you can tell, it really does make a huge difference and the practice mute can really come in handy if you are practicing in a situation where you're trying not to be too loud. For example, if you're staying in a hotel or at someone's house and you need to practice or even if you have roommates, this can be a really great thing to use. The only thing I'll say about the practice mute, if at all possible, I wouldn't use this every single time you practice, just because it's really good to be able to get used to the actual tone and full volume sound of your violin so that it's not too jarring when you do finally take off the mute. So I would recommend limiting your use of the practice mute to those times where you really, really need to use it. And then every other time you can go ahead and just play without it. Well, those were my five game-changing violin hacks for you. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you can use at least a few of those tips and tricks as you continue to learn the violin. I wish you the best of luck going forward with practicing and playing. Don't forget to subscribe before you go so that you don't miss my next video, and I hope to see you then. Happy practicing. If you've made it this far, you must have enjoyed the video, so why not check out this one next? Also, if you'd like exclusive content from the Tune Project and a more personalized experience, head over to Patreon and join our wonderful little fiddle community. Your support helps me to continue to grow as a creator and ensures that I'm able to continue to provide free educational content here on YouTube. Thank you!